thank you. Good morning, North Shore. Congratulations, I am here to celebrate you. So I want to start by saying thank you, President Heinemann. I appreciate the invitation to be here today. I want to make a note, though, at the top. Today is the 70th anniversary of the historic Brown versus Board of Education decision. That makes this a powerfully important day to remember that we still have much to do to desegregate our society and our schools. But it is also a day to remember that change is possible when we fight for it. It is a great day to graduate. Yeah. So to our graduates, this is it. This is our chance to celebrate an end to all of those late night cram sessions and the beginning of even more time to listen to Queen Bee knock it out of the park with Cowboy Carter. Woohoo! <laughs> I gotta have your priorities straight here. Now, here's the thing I have just two rules when it comes to commencement speeches give one piece of useful advice and keep it short. Um, I know that every minute that I go over uh, is one more minute before you can crack open that celebratory beer. Uh, <laughs> which given the looks of some of you in row four, you may have already started. Um, so, to the class of 2020, yeah, you're looking around, right? Uh-huh, uh-huh, yes. Um, so, to the class of 2024, you did it. Classes are over, papers are finished, exams are done, and you have made it to the finish line. One more time, congratulations to all of you. Yeah. Now, I think it's safe to say that it took a lot of help to get you here today. You wouldn't be here without all the love from your family and friends and maybe a few iced coffees from Duncan. So let's hear it for our families, our friends, and our Duncan. Yep. And of course, we can't forget the faculty, the adjunct professors, and the staff here at NSCC who helped you every step of the way. These are the people, you bet, give them a round of applause, I mean, you bet. These are the people who taught you everything from anatomy to creative writing to the fact that despite what you learned as a kid, more people are in danger from heart disease than from quicksand. So let's hear it for our teachers again. Now, President Heinemann actually stepped on my line, uh, and that is why I particularly wanted to be here today. I went to a commuter college that was a lot like NSCC. I got married while I was still in school. I worked to pay for tuition and books. I lived through the terror of being late for an exam because the traffic was backed up. And when life happened, I struggled to get enough credits and I ended up graduating late. And it is exactly those experiences that give me such deep respect for you today. You, the graduates, you are the people who mastered the hard art of making something happen no matter what. You are the people who have solved a million problems in order to walk across this stage today. Uh, you solve child care, you solve transportation, you solved two jobs or maybe three. You solved a sick family member at home. You solved a tough math class and a lab class and a tricky schedule. You solved it all to get here today. And make no mistake, there are always plenty of reasons not to enroll again next semester. Plenty of reasons to do something other than homework. Plenty of reasons just to give up. But no matter how hard it was, you all pushed through. You hung in there, you made this day happen, and today is a celebration 
of everything that brought you here. Woohoo for you. You bet. It is also the foundation for my advice. Now, you learned a lot in school, a lot from your teachers and your counselors and even your classmates. And I hope you remember all of the formulas and all of the rules and all of the new terminology. But I hope you remember something that is even more important. You can do anything. And how do I know that? Because you have done this. Despite the challenges, you are walking across the stage today, and the reason that that is happening is because you have a very special skill set. You set goals, you solve problems, and you accomplish what you want, and it doesn't get much better than that. So, what comes next? Some of you already have your next job. Line down, way to go. Some of you are signed up for another degree program. Also good. Some of you don't have a clue. <laughs> but no matter what, life is going to deal you a lot of twists and turns in the next few years. So now, get ready for it. Here comes the advice. Be open. Be open to the unexpected. Make room for the improbable. Embrace the unlikely. When I graduated from my commuter college, I did not lean back and say, U.S. Senate, here I come. <laughs> nope, uh, not even close. Uh, you could actually call my plan the get married at 19, drop out of school, get yourself back in school, have some kids, get yourself back in school again, get divorced, get remarried, move 11 times, teach school, and end up in the United States Senate. My plan actually felt like Velma from Scooby-Doo looking for her glasses. <laughs> Look, I never planned to get into politics, but here's the thing. The chaos of life not only upended my plans, it also opened doors. And when those doors cracked open, I figured, how hard could this be? I can try it. And I'll give you just one example. Several years ago, I was teaching long phone rings, and as this former congressman, who had been appointed to head up a commission to rewrite bankruptcy laws. He thought I should go to D.C. to help him. I thought he was crazy. <laughs> I didn't know anything about politics. I didn't even know anyone in politics. And I could think of a hundred reasons why I was not qualified to do this. But I thought, huh. If I could get through school with a baby on my hip and a toddler crying in the other room and a load of laundry in the washer and dinner to get on the table and a job, then I could probably handle some congressional committee in Washington. <laughs> you know, what the hell? It turned out I was wrong. I mean, really wrong. I hated that congressional committee. Still do. Uh, day after day, I fought those credit card companies, and I lost pretty much every battle. But I did not stay down. I scratched my way back, eventually setting up a new government agency that protected the little guy instead of the giant banks. And then I ran for office, and then I became your senator. And now, I don't win every time, but I win more than I lose. Yeah. So I want to underline the advice, be open, believe in the power of the unexpected, believe in yourself. Now, maybe you came here for certification in nursing, but you look around and realize it is up to you to organize the nurses for your union. Maybe you came here to become a teacher. And then you realize your passion is writing the books that teachers will use in the classrooms. Maybe the guy that you are dating will turn out to be the guy you will marry, or divorce, or both. <laughs> Believe me, I've done both. <laughs> be open. An opportunity is an opportunity. And all the planning in the world can't 
prepare you for what's ahead. Nope. But the grit and the perseverance that I see in every single one of you today has prepared you. And come on, look at how it worked out for Travis Kelsey. Sure, he worked hard, but I'm pretty sure that at the top of his bingo card was not dating Taylor Swift. <laughs> so be open. <laughs> this is your moment. Here's to you, class of 2024. You are the future of America. Be open, have courage, and don't be afraid of taking risks because our nation and our world needs you. And finally, graduates, always remember the golden rule of politics and life. Don't post on TikTok after midnight. Thank you all.